Hello there, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel if you're a return viewer, you're watching the Christchurch Review of Books, and I'm Kerry. Today, a book that I've been waiting for for some time, and perhaps didn't live up to the expectations I had to it. Now that book is National Dish by Anya von Bremsen. Now about 10 years ago now, I read a really fascinating book by von Bremsen called The Art of Soviet Cookery. Um, it was a, an extraordinary tawdry force piece of work where she managed to mix uh, personal memoir, the story of her family in, in uh, Russia and uh, Soviet Union, her story of immigrating to the United States at the height of the Cold War, and uh, she also managed to investigate the place of the various food uh, trends and traditions in the Soviet Union and, and how they uh, affected life in that country, and she also looked at the the past and the present of of those foods and what they mean to her today. And there was also a bit of an element of cookbook in that. She had recipes of the various uh, Soviet foods, which from memory involved a lot of salads involving an awful lot of mayonnaise. Now, I really enjoyed that book. And uh, when I saw she had a new book out um, coming out, I uh, pre-ordered it. And um, yeah, so that, that book was Mastering the Art of Soviet cooking, if I got the title wrong earlier, sorry. Um, anyway, in the intervening years she's written several other cookbooks and mainly worked on newspaper and magazine articles and that's where I think this book comes in. It's, it's really uh, about six articles, six, seven articles kind of tied together under one theme and that theme is National Dish of course. So she travels to six countries, she's, in the introduction she starts out in Paris, France uh, investigating the traditional pot au feu, if I've said that correctly. Um, from there she goes to Naples, Italy, investigating pizza and to a lesser extent pasta. Um, then it's Tokyo, investigating ramen and the culture behind rice. Then there's Seville, Spain, where she investigates the, the culture around tapas. Um, Oaxaca, Mexico, the very mo molly uh, foods and, and their preparations um, and then I think it's Istanbul and I've probably missed one out uh, no that's all uh, Istanbul is the last one which investigates the uh, the various kind of like fast food finger foods and how the history of Turkey from the Ottoman Empire through to the modern secular state and the way things are going now um, has there been any changes in the food there now I was going to go into detail about each of these areas but the one common thing that kind of connects them all is that once she investigates into the history and the culture behind each of these foods in each of the locations and regions she finds out that most of them are based on a, a whole heap of lies and, and old wives tales and, and factually incorrect information. Um, most of these countries make a lot of a, a big deal in their culture, it's entwined with the culture of these foods and but once you start investigating them you find that most of the stories are behind them are just complete puffery. Um, in Japan, they have this kind of romantic ideal of, of, of uh, traditional meals, traditional foods, and in reality, most of their current diet is, was actually developed from the 19th century onward, and ramen noodles came in in the 1950s to uh, kind of use up the surplus of wheat they had received from the United States as aid following World War II. Um, Likewise, Seville, Spain, the tapas, there's like a whole, uh, a whole cliched view of Spain was uh, pushed in the 1970s by the uh, dictator Franco at the time as to present Spain as some type of fun-loving, sleepy, cliched holiday destination and that was, they kind of used all the, the culture of the Seville region to represent the entire country and they're not too happy about that now but, you know, they're living with it. Um, Oaxaca, Mexico, the mollies, the, the kind of pounded up beans and herbs and spices and, and, and all, the, all the ingredients, the corn, um, it's back-breaking labour and, and the, the Oaxaca region has kind of been presented as top, some type of hipster's paradise where you go to get the real Mexican culture and the real Mexican food and it kind of ignores the the back-breaking labour that the, the women in that area have to do to prepare this food. They have to pound ingredients on stones for hours and, and, and all that type of thing. 
and it's kind of like swept under the carpet and a lot of their food is being taken over by massive mega corporations which supply all the tortillas and, and to the towns and where they would usually be creating them uh, by themselves. So likewise we also uh, in Istanbul uh, there's going on about the Ottoman Empire and how that changed to the secular state of Turkey um, after the fall of the empire and how did the food change at that time? Well, everyone says nothing changed, and uh, that seems to be the attitude of Turkey. The, the political upheavals, things change, but in, well, to the person in the street there, nothing really changes. And um, likewise, so that's really the theme of the book. You, you find out the myths and fairy tales behind all these national dishes and, and the reality, and the fact doesn't change. These things have become intertwined with their culture in all these locations, and the people are not going to give them up now. Um, no matter what the truth, the facts, and the reality of the situation. Um, it's an interesting book if you want to learn about cultures and the travel. Um, in each chapter she does a kind of a complete immersion thing at first. She uses all the local names and the local places and you're wondering what the hell was that. And it's only she slowly kind of brings out the meanings and, 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 the, and the places, what, where they are, how they are, and the, and the various figures, the various historians and cultural people she talks to. Um, it's, you know, it's like a, a full immersion dip in each of these places and then slowly you come to understand it a little closer uh, to your own culture, um, if that makes any sense. Downside of this book, it does feel like a number of magazine articles strung together. It doesn't feel like a coherent, coherent whole. Um, there's no really place of time and place. She's in one city and then she's in another city and then she's in another city. You don't know if this took place over several years or several weeks, really. Um, I was a little disappointed it wasn't really the transcendent type of thing like her, her book that I read 10 years ago. It's much more of a workmanlike uh, production. Uh, like I said, probably close to the magazine articles that she, she writes uh, for her daily bread. Um, that said, if you're interested in travel, food and other cultures, you can do a lot worse than a book like this. This was a, at least kept me busy, kept me entertained, um, scratched my head a bit about some of the, 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 the strange uh, beliefs and, and, and cultural oddities, uh, but that's just from my point of view. So that is National Dish by Anya von Bremsen, uh, available worldwide now. Okay, we'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day, afternoon, morning, night, wherever you are. Cheers.